my dear brethren, I'm glad we are here again tonight for another House to House Fellowship. It's such a delight and a pleasure every time you, you tune in and every time we come together for House Fellowship. We're going to be having a great time today, trust me, because God has been good. I sense His presence every single week. I sense His presence even now. And I know that we are in for a great time in 2024, the year of abounding grace. Okay? So, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. Let's get going. Let's pray now and start. Father, we thank you tonight. And we bless you for your faithfulness. We bless you for this house to house today and this week. Thank you for what you did for us on Sunday. And thank you for what you're going to be doing every single day and every single weekend. Lord, we pray tonight. Minister to us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good. So, I hope you have been excited about the series that I've been doing, uh, that we have been doing in church, um, How to Choose. Uh, within the, you know, there's a sub-series sub to the bigger theme, Abounding in Grace. So, Abounding in Favor, Abounding Grace, which is the theme for the year, Abounding in Favor, and Jesus Christ increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with man. Uh, Luke 252 by now everybody should have memorized that okay and this last two weeks I have been specifically talking about how to choose because one way you abound in favor with God and man is that you you are deliberate about your company you associate with people with the same shared values that's very critical so I've been talking about that and in choosing the the, the the, the most, um, the ultimate of relationships is between a man and a woman, a spouse, a spousal relationship, marriage relationship, um, a romantic marriage relationship. And so I've been talking about how to choose a spouse, how to choose, or, and I've started by talking about how not to be a bad spouse. I've been talking about three women, and today I want to summarize those three women. Number one, I've talked about Jezebel, um, Jezzy, uh, 1 Kings 21, we read 1 Kings 21 from verse 1 through to verse uh, 7, verse 12. And then I've talked about um, Herodias. Herodias was a woman who, um, who, 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 uh, who, who supervised the killing or who triggered the beheading of a man of God, Elijah, um, John the Baptist, a great man of God. He was Jesus' pastor at a point in time. He was the one who introduced Jesus to the world. He said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He was the one who baptized Jesus. Herodias orchestrated and triggered and made sure that this man was beheaded. Why so? Because John the Baptist told Herod who had taken Herodias from his brother. He said it was a wrong thing to do. If you want to marry, if you want to fall in love, there are many women out there, particularly with such a man of power, Herod. You know, you didn't have to go and poach on your brother's wife. You know, and John the Baptist said that was a bad thing to do. And now I know that there are many women who kill because of love. There are women who do all kinds of things because of love. Their hearts are so wicked. And when they're in competition with another woman, they will kill the other woman. I mean, it's, the news is all over the place, right? How women do this. And there are men too who kill because of love. And I want to say this to you. God always has something good for you. You don't need to kill another person because you love one person or you think that that person is threatening your romance with uh, one person or the other. No, God is able to make all grace abound to you. There's no limit to the blessings of God. When one woman is not there, God will give you another woman. When one man is not there, God will give you another man. And then, of course, we talked about, um, and I, I want to go back a little bit and talk about um, Lord um, Herodias and Jezebel. I said these two women were very wicked women. They just were malicious. They were vengeful. They, they were wicked. There was a wickedness in their heart was <laughs> is immeasurable as far as I'm concerned. Of course, Jezebel has become synonymous with uh, an evil, uh, manipulative, demonic, wicked woman. And I've hardly seen a woman who is called Jezebel. Never seen somebody who is called Jezebel. You never know. There may be somebody out there. But you see, wickedness, I, I want to say this, if you are a woman, yeah, the Bible says in Proverbs 31, verse 12, it says that the heart of her husband trusts in her because she will do him good all the days of her life and all the days of his life. So you, as a woman, to show kindness to your husband and the concerns of your husband and the affairs of your husband, you cannot afford to be a wicked woman. And one way is where we see this expressed today in nowadays, and I'm going to be pointed about this because this is house to house, and I want you to discuss this, is where a woman, for instance, or a man sees 
a man sees his wife in great need and he does not lift a finger to help, you know, particularly on financial matters. He says, well, my money is my money, her money is her money. And but meanwhile, there was a time when you were using the other person's money, it did not matter. But now that you're in a position of financial strength, you say, oh, well, my money is my money and you don't care. That's wicked. That's wicked. And some women, and I've heard this of late, you know, well, I've always heard that, you know, when, I, when we first got married, uh, when I got married, one of the days we were talking, my wife said, oh, why must I use my money to do it? I told her, I said, just pause there. I never want to hear that phrase in our marriage. There's nothing like my money. The money is our money. The two shall become one. It's our money, our financial resources together. I don't want that phrase where it's my money. You are doing stuff. You're hiding it away from your spouse because you think it's my money. The man has great needs. You don't want to help. That's wicked. It, you know, it may not be to the uh, level of Jesse. It may not be to the level of Herodias. But hey, why is it that when one of the fruits of the spirit is kindness and then you think that it's okay for you to create a situation where you have a lot or you have more and you are holding it and allowing your spouse to suffer financially. That's not good. Okay, now let's move on and talk about um, Mrs. Lot. Mrs. Lot, the Bible says, um, a proverb, um, Luke 17, verse 32, Jesus said this. He said one sentence, just three words, remember Lord's wife. Luke 17, 32, he said, remember Lord's wife. What was it about Lord's wife? Find that in Genesis chapter 19, verse 26. As, as if as a Lot and his family was coming out of um, Sodom and Gomorrah, the Bible says in verse 26 of uh, Genesis chapter 19, he said, but his wife looked back behind him and she became a pillar of salt. There are two things I want to emphasize that she looked back behind him and she became a pillar of salt. In the first place, she should not have been behind him. She should have been by his side. Because the thing about marriage is that you are supposed to work side by side. You are supposed to support one another from the side, not from behind. This woman looked back from behind him. So what I conclude here is that this woman has been used to not working by the side of her husband. You know, it's either she was working ahead of him, pushing him towards certain materialistic ventures and adventure, or walking behind him when she is not pleased by a decision that does not suit her materialistic appetite. So the Bible says that she looked back from behind him. And I want, I, I want us to discuss this uh, today. What makes a woman want to stay behind her husband? It, you know, I mean, you can stay behind if you're behind to support, you're behind to egg on, to urge on, to, to, to encourage, but behind because you are not in sync, you are not in step, with the plans of the family, you are not in step with the vision of, of, of his leadership and all that. No, I want us to discuss that. What makes you do that and how can you avoid staying behind? But the other part here is that she looked back because as far as I'm concerned, this woman had a materialistic expression. She had a materialistic tendency. She had a materialistic appetite. She looked back from behind him. In fact, when I read about Mrs. Lord, I, I'm, I, I want to go back to Genesis chapter 13, where the Bible says that there was a strife between the headsmen of Lord and the headsmen of Abraham. And the Bible says Abraham called the nephew and said, hey, listen, let's choose. If you choose the, the right, I'll go to the left. If you choose the left, I'll go to the right. If you choose east, I'll go west. If you choose west, I'll go east. And the Bible says, tragically, Lord made the first choice, knowing fully well that the blessing was not on his shoulders, that he was only a beneficiary of what Abraham carried. Abraham was the benefactor. Abraham was the one that God called. Abraham was the one that God blessed. Abraham was the one that received the patriarchal and the uh, divine blessing from the Father, which from God the Father, which filtered and washed over every other person. And Lord, mindful of that, still had the gods to make the choice and tell Abraham to take the remainder, which at that time, it looked, it looked dismal. At, the, at that time, it looked, you know, like the remnant, the, the, the crumbs of what, of what um, uh, he had chosen, you know. But God still blessed Abraham. So when I think about Mrs. Lord and the role that she played in Lord's life, I have a feeling that this woman was so such an influence in even orchestrating that strife, that strife or even the choice that Lord made. Because she was, you see, a woman comes into a man's life to be a guide, to be a supporter, to be a helper, to be a counselor, to be um, uh, um, uh, somebody who, a teacher too, if, if possible, okay? But for Lord to have made that kind of decision, 
And when you read that story of how the, the angels got to Sodom and Gomorrah, the Bible said that the Lord was sitting at the gate. Now, the Bible says in Proverbs 31, it said the woman, that, that woman who is powerful and uh, significant and occupies such a large space in the man's life will make the man to sit at the gate. The man is known at the gate. So this woman was indeed a powerful woman. Unfortunately, she had materialistic tendency she had materialistic appetite she had materialistic uh, expressions and this is one of the things i want us to talk about you're dating a girl and you see such materialistic expansive appetite that cannot be controlled she's never really content by what you guys have and then and I, i'm careful how i said it. it's not just a woman who has that kind of problem there are some men too there are people who have gone into huge financial debt huge credit card debt huge all kinds of loans and all of that not for things that are advancing their world, not for things that are helping the family, but just for their appetite, the year and now appetite. For them, there's nothing like delayed gratification. If they want it, they want it now. And they are going to do anything, however, whenever, and regardless of the circumstances. So you, you go to the mall, for instance, you see a dress that is going for some outrageous figure, but you remember that you always wanted this dress for a particular event. And then you mortgage your credit card, you mortgage your finances, and you get it. Uh, materialistic expressions. No, it is not good. It's not a fruit of the spirit that you cannot control yourself. You cannot control your appetite. So in this month and in this season, as we talk about how to choose, one of the things I want you to be on the watch out for, find out, look at the people, look at the girl you're dating, look at the man you are dating, look at even your marriage, those of you who are romantic or who are married lives, you, you know, who are married people, look at your marriage and sit down and talk about this. And this evening, that's one of the things I want us to talk about. How do you control your appetite? How do you avoid the, the danger, the very um, terrible consequential danger of being materialistic and greed and avarice. You want to get as much as possible regardless of how it's impacting on your finances, impacting on your family, impact, impacting on your children and impacting on your future. Okay, these are some of the things I want us to talk about tonight. You know, I've talked about Jezebel, a wicked, you know, vengeful woman. I've talked about Herodias, another woman who will kill for love. Uh, Jezebel, you know, got the husband to kill for real estate. You know, of course, there are many other things like that in scriptures. Um, we know that David also killed for romance, uh, you know, but for the purpose of this conversation, we talked about Jay-Z, we talked about Herodias, we talked about Mrs. Lot, and I want us to look at those things, okay? Next Sunday, I think, or next week, we'll be talking about uh, one of the things we talked about. How do you end? When do you know when to end it? There are times when, you know, the Bible said there's a time for everything. You want to end it when it is time for you to end it. Okay, God bless you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we pray that, Lord, you will help us in our conversation today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.